Hello everybody and uh, my name is Narendra Kumar and we are from NRK Academy. And today we are going to do a small review of uh, a beautiful novel, a very great novel. I think one of the greatest novels of, uh, which has come in English in, from India uh, called The Guide by R.K. Narayan. Now one of the most beautiful things about R.K. Narayan is he captures India completely. It's like he is born with a uh, kind of absorbent mind it to take in India completely. So completely that you are surprised how he can express India so well in English. I would say he inaugurated Indian English. Simple English but captures the nuances of Indian thought, Indian culture, Indian ethos, Indian contradictions, Indian comedies, Indian tragedies. This novel is a comic tragedy or tragic comedy. There is a comedy to life. There is. You know, everybody is born with a nature. They acquire a certain character, a personality. With very, very little self-awareness, self-understanding. You know, you see people around. All of us, even sometimes we think, do I, do I know myself? What am I up to? Where am I going? What am I doing? You know, what am I doing? Is a very... Um, I would say very uh, frightening thought. What am I doing with my life? If I really go to and ask a person, what are you doing? Um, seriously ask a person. You'll wonder, I mean, it'll shake him. What am I doing? Like, am I right or wrong or what? Life is all about confusion. Believe it or not, this novel, whole theme is on that confusion. Confusion which comes because you don't know yourself. Like Jesus says, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. You will have to forgive this Raju, uh, the hero of uh, the protagonist of Guide, because throughout the novel, he did not know what he was doing. Just imagine. He was such a vagabond. Going with the wind, they say, no, he took life as it comes. And he went on taking, taking, taking life as it came, as it came, as it came, as it came. And it went on going like that. He started his life in a shop, small shop. Now, one of the things about Raju, was he was a sweet talker. You know, this, see these marketing people, some of them are very brilliant. They'll get to know them, your mood, they'll, they'll know how you are. They'll be so loving and so attached to you. They'll be so professionally, uh, what should I say, friend. They'll be friendly with you. They'll uh, enrapture you, they'll capture your mind and you know, make you do what they want you to do. Make you, uh, they'll impress you. Raju was that kind of a so-called, he'll sell anything. He'll, be, he'll convince you that blue is red and red is blue. He was like that kind of a person. He was just like that. His nature was that. He was very, he was, he was guileless. He was innocent. But he didn't know what he was doing. And he starts his uh, life. His father had a small shop. And then he starts selling sweets. He becomes successful there. And then he goes to a railway station. He becomes a railway raju. Because he keeps telling people which train is coming, when it is coming and all that. Wherever he was being, he was so smart. Street smart, as they say. And he really captured everybody's hearts and mind. And, you know, he became successful as a railway guide. And then he became a guide as such in that small town. Uh, he started telling people um, uh, where is what, what are the scenic spots. He didn't have that much knowledge of uh, the, the archaeological wonders or whatever. But whatever people had told him, he presented it very, very uh, interestingly. And then came a woman in his life. In every man comes a woman. And she came, Rosie. Her name was Rosie. And there's also a little comic of Raju, Rosie. You know, there's a comedy, there's a comic, comic touch, gentle comedy. And uh, he sees her uh, um, doing a snake dance and he's shocked. Um, he is shocked because he's in love. He's charmed by her. Raju, for the first time in his life, is charmed by this woman called Rosie. And Rosie has a husband. So it's an illegitimate affair that he starts having with uh, uh, Rosie. And she separates from her husband. And she wants to be a famous dancer. And Raju puts his act together. He makes her a famous dancer. Look at his life. He's going haywire. He's going crazy. And then he becomes over ambitious again. People like that make huge mistakes. He does some forgery and he's sent to prison. So he started in his sweet shop. He has landed up in prison. There, it's very interesting. Uh, he starts enjoying the prison. 
wherever he is, he adjusts to that place. He, he, uh, he passes his time and finally he is released from the prison. And here comes the genius of R. K. Let me explain what happens here. He has come back with a whole journey. He can't go back to Malgudi. Malgudi is a, a fictional place, but it is very much like a, a small India which Arkanaran created out of his imagination. There's no place like Malgudi, but there is a place like Malgudi in Arkanaran's novels. So he can't go back to Malgudi. He can't go back to his place. So where, does, where can he go now? And then he's at the crossroad of life. And then he just drifts, drifts, drifts and comes under a tree. He comes to the river bank of a river and he just relaxes there. He says, I'm not going to go back. And then comes a carrot called Velan. Velan. And he, he thinks he's a Swami. Here comes the extraordinary genius of Arkanaran. He converts the whole, you know, a turning point comes in uh, Raju's life because Velan thinks he's a Swami. Now what will happen to a person who starts acting like a Swami? The novel becomes too intense, too exciting, too multi-layered here, too multi-layered. Because it's about a man who doesn't know himself. He's at the crossroads of his life. And here people are telling him he's a Swami. And uh, he gives some suggestion. Uh, he talks to Velen's uh, sister and she, she actually agrees to marry because he talked to her. Velen thinks he's really a Swami. That small incident and the many more incidents, you have to read the novel to understand that. So comical. You will you don't know whether to laugh or cry. I mean, everybody start, start thinking he's a Swami. And one day he gets enough of it because you know you just can't be Swami. It's not easy to be called Holy God, and after a while your conscience picks you, and you Raju will start picking his conscience. No, I'm not going to be a Swami here, and uh, it's so comical actually at that point of time. And then one day he tells Velen the whole of his life story, and believe it or not, Velen still thinks he's a Swami. That was the ultimate irony. And this guy realized, oh my God, this guy is not going to leave me. He is going to kill me with his admiration. And then slowly what happens, he starts uh, uh, realizing to a certain level that all that which he went through life, because of his impersonation, he realizes a certain thing, that all his life it was a deception. It was an illusion. Why did he live like that? There was no reason in it. And a, a, a strange, profound uh, soulfulness comes into his being. Just imagine, I can't imagine a novel like that. How do people write like that? When I read Guide again and again and again, I'm struck. How many times you can read it? I'm telling you. Just read it once. You'll feel like reading it again, again, again. It's like a reflection of life completely. And finally, Raju starts seriously. Not that he, he says, I'm a Swami, I'm going to... Or he realizes, he didn't sentimentalize the whole thing. Arkana didn't sentimentalize. The, he had a vision and he became a prophet and all that. No, he didn't become a prophet. There's nothing like prophet. There's only a man realizing his soul. You have to understand your soul. It's not easy. And then profoundly, because of certain circumstances, I'm not going to spoil the story for you, he decides for the first time to be what usually people call selfless, but I would call a profound self-realization comes to him and he says, I'm going to do a fast for Ray. Now, why he wants to do that at that point of time? Please read the novel. But I'm not going to spoil the novel, the beautiful novel for you. And then the last ending, he fasts and fasts. And he, it's like he becomes ferocious about doing. He gets a wonderful satisfaction of doing something which is not for money, which is not for fame, which is not for sentimental love. It is a something profound. That much realization he has. And last scene, uh, so beautiful, he gets up. Uh, he's fasting for rains and actually rains come. He leaves Arkana and leaves it all as a mystery at the end. Even though at the exalted point, there is an irony. You know, he says it's raining in the hills. He, he senses it. And he falls and dies. That is the ending of one of the most extraordinary literary creations, uh, one of the most extraordinary literary creations by R. K. Um, um, forget the prizes, Nobel Prize, but it's a prize and all that. But this is a novel which goes to the depth of a man's journey. I would say jumble or tumble or roller coaster. These are the words which come to my mind. You know, bumpy ride to, through life. Bumpy, but lands through into self-realization.
of a kind. Thank you so much. I hope you'll enjoy it. The small review of a um, guide by R.K. Narayan. And I hope, I really hope, I wish for you that you would read it. Because just read it once. Hearing a review and reading the whole basic thing are totally different experiences. I just want to give you a taste of it. So that you go ahead and read it. Thank you so much. This is Narendra Kumar. And we are from NRK Academy. Thank you.